One of the greatest archaeological areas in the Western world is the Valle dei Templi in Agrigento, Sicily, along the southern coast. This area was built starting in the 6th century BC, and just to give that a bit of perspective, that's the time of the Persian Empire, the beginning of Darius I, also the period where Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon sacked Jerusalem. At the same time, Greater Greece was expanding along the islands here, up into southern Italy. So the Valley of the Templi is actually a misnomer. As you can see, we're standing up on a ridge overlooking the valley, where we have the port along the coast. This archaeological area consists of seven temples, as well as many other archaeological remains spanning centuries, not just Greek, but ancient Hellenistic and Roman, all the way up until the Byzantine era and Middle Ages. along the southern border of this town. And as you can see, along the southern border, the fortification wall was not made up by uh, superimposed square stone blocks. Mm. If you look at these remains, uh, you can just see a, a unique block of solid rock. Because for building this wall along the southern border, the inhabitants of the Krakas simply used the stone they found.
Concord, or Concordia as it is also known, was named after the Roman goddess of hope. The temple was first constructed in the year 430 BC and is located in Sicily in Agriento's Valley of the Temples. The Temple of Concord is one of ten other temples that reside in the archaeological park. The area in which the temple was built was comprised of a very rocky and uneven surface, so the temple had to be constructed on higher ground on a solid base. The Temple of Concord is said by some to be one of the world's most well-preserved Doric temples. The beauty of the temple radiates throughout the valley in which it resides. It stands 8 meters tall and is 6 columns by 13 columns of pure Greek architecture. The temple was used for many different things throughout history. Its first use, archaeologists believe, may have been a repository for highly prized Greek works of art and continued to not be a not uncommon place of meeting for the Senate. Throughout the centuries, the use of the temple changed and during the 6th century, it was converted in more, may, in more ways than one, as it became a Christian basilica that was dedicated to the apostles Paul and Peter. In the year 1795, the Temple of Concordia was renovated for the first time, and the remains of that renovation is what we see today in the Valley of Temples. The temple is truly a beautiful work of art, and it has withstood the test of time.
This is Villa Romana del Casale. Built in the 4th century, it boasts the largest collection of Roman mosaic floors anywhere in the world. This excavation project was started in the 20th century. This residence was on a large agricultural estate. The Villa Romana del Casale was built by a powerful family between the 3rd and 4th century AD. With over 50 rooms, it was one of the most luxurious of its kind. The villa was partially destroyed by an earthquake in the 12th century. A landslide preserved these mosaics in excellent condition. These are the remains of the communal bathroom where the family was heading to. Pipes were placed in lines on both sides of the walls. Hot water circulated through these pipes to keep the bathroom warm. The bath was equipped with the latest features, including underfloor heating. The people entering the villa found this horseshoe shaped courtyard surrounded by columns with the capital in Ionic style and the main entrance of the villa was made like a triumphal arch having on the top a water reservoir which supplied four fountains, four basins, two inside and half circular shape and two in rectangular shape outside. Then, in the middle of the villa, we have the peristyle, a huge cartium giving light and air to the guest rooms. And in the middle of this cartium, we have the, a huge fountain that increases the freshness of the air and the uh, garden. Then, on the eastern side, we have the apartment reserved for the villa owner and his family. And finally, we have the dining room, the so-called triclinium, and like a luxury entrance, we have a, a huge cartier, the so-called Sistus, in an elliptical porch with mosaics showing animals surrounded by acanthus leaves. Visit inside the Villa del Casale from the Sistus. This is a changing room. The mosaics on the floor portray scenes from family life. The woman in the centre is the Villa Master's wife. His children stand on both sides. The wife is wearing a colourful necklace. The person standing on the far end is a servant carrying aromatic oils and other items in a basket. Members of the excavation team were most surprised when they found this corridor. The entire floor stretches for 60 metres. It was entirely adorned in mosaics. It depicts African hunting scenes. Captured beasts were transported to the Colosseum in Rome for gladiator fights. Hunting was one of the most popular leisure activities for powerful Roman citizens.
the nine girls in bikini. Maybe this is the famous room, thanks to which the villa is known in all over the world. It's very strange to find nine girls in sports subjects with a costume very similar to the bikini nowadays. Work. On the top there is another mosaic in geometrical shape because this room changed function. Primarily it was used like a bedroom for the servants who worked for the villa owner in this family. 40, 50 years after the building of the villa, the room changed function and was reserved for a very important guest room here. Nine girls, we can distinguish two factions for the colors of the brass when by the girls greens and reds. First plant with bars in the hands, throwing the discus and running. While in the lower level we have the winner. She had received the victory palm and crown from that girl on the left side, almost wrapped in that golden mantle, and she's giving a thinner crown and palm, maybe the second prize to that girl holding this floral wing, and to the right two girls playing a sort of volume. All around, recently cleaned and restored, frescoes and Pompeian style, giving us the idea of marble and a little temple in the middle with the open doors. Now this is completely unique. <laughs> there is nothing like this from the ancient world that survives anywhere else except here. And if it hadn't been for the discovery of these mosaics, everybody would still think that the bikini was invented in the 20th century. That's right. Because here we are, we've got ancient Roman girls wearing bikinis. Because in Latin literature, they record this thing that aristocrats would do is that they would sponsor female gymnasts right. to engage in team right. sports. And they think that's what this shows. So that these girls have all been competing in different sports. Different. It's a tour de force. Modeling of human anatomy in mosaic is about as hard as it gets. The archaeologists get very annoyed because the people who promote tourism here call them the bikini girls and they say, no, 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 they're not bikini girls, they're gymnasts. We are in front of the basilica, one of the largest rooms inside the villa after the three cleaning, the dining room. Unfortunately, at this moment, there are works on restoration, they are installing the new roof. This room was very large, 27 meters long, 14 meters wide and 14 meters for the eye. This room is the only room of the villa not covered with mosaic but with, with precious 40 kinds of marbles in geometrical shapes, marbles arriving primarily from Northern Africa. This was a sort of huge reception hall where the villa owner received the very important guest was also used for commercial purposes and like a stock. Faces and the symbols of the world coming just opposite to you between the two colors. What you find is a semicircular wall. That area here, there is the Larario. Larario means the votive sacred chapel where the owners of the villa could worship their Larry's foyer and other different kind of boys and children of different instruments. It is probably a musical competition. It is a bedroom for children exactly. What you find in the apps are two girls seated below a tree and they are waving garlands or crowned with roses that are the prizes for the competition. Here we find on the first row to the left side a winner because of the palm of the victory and the crown of roses. So music competition, even the boys and the children with the obelisk in the middle, so it is the Circus Maximus in Rome. But instead of chariots, where you find our boys, they are probably acting like chariots, like their heroes did. Instead of horses, where you find our birds, and around the neck of these birds, we find necklace representing different seasons. So flamingos stands for spring, then you find a white duck representing uh, summer because of the spikes. Then below there are grape vines, so this means autumn. And the winner is winter. Okay, it's going to receive the palm tree. So this is the area for the 
um, wife of the lady of the house and their children for living here, too, with a fountain, with columns, with paintings for receiving, okay, for let the rooms receiving sunlight and air, like the one we saw before in the Peristilio, the biggest one. It is the Indian symbol symbolizing sun in its rotation. What does it mean? The arms are the four seasons, but the Romans employed the symbol as an auspicious symbol. The left side, what you find are two gods competing among themselves. What you find is Pan and Isapartus. Isapartus are Bacchus' best friends, so Selenius, Asatayo, and Amena. So Bacchus, stand, uh, sorry, Pan stands for irrationality and sexual desire, where the main protagonists, the main characters are boys. They are hunting, uh, two of them are killing some small animals like a goat or a wild hare, and it is the, the reason why the scholars say the moment in which the boy is killing the small animals is a sort of rite of passage from childhood to adolescence. They are growing up. The erotic scene meaning bedroom, and then this is the last I'm going to explain, okay? So have a look at the erotic scene. I'm waiting for the other with female busts around. Okay, the female busts represent the four seasons. So it is the story of their love in its immortality or eternity. While the masks, the female masks, hidden to hide their faces during the orgies. So this is the reason why erotic scene. But as I told you before, it is both not only a sensual, okay. the antechamber, with the representation of the Odyssey. So what you find here is Ulysses or Odysseo, who is offering a pot full of red wine to the Cyclope Polyphemus. So Ulysses wanted to get him drunk in order to blind the only eye the Cyclope had in his face. Then, for, say, hidden among uh, sorry, below the stomach of the ship in order to escape. But what is here is a theatrical scene. So what looks like to be the entrance of the grotto, the cave in the volcano, and